And now to the lead goes Joseph Newgarden. Newgarden with a monster run off turn two. I'm Dave First. We're here with Joseph Newgarden, a two-time NTT IndyCar Series champion. Perhaps more importantly, though, in 2023, uh, the 2023 107th edition winner of the Indianapolis 500. That will never be taken away from you, right? There, there's so much to go through in the season. That's the highlight, though, right? Definitely. I mean, it's very special to walk into this establishment now, you know, and. and <laughs> you feel like you own the joint now? A little bit? I, well, I feel, <laughs> no, I just, it, it, I've been here so many years and I've left with a lot of broken hearts. Yeah. I think it's impossible to not leave here without a broken heart if you don't win the race. And to finally leave one year and say, hey, hey we did it. And we were, you know, we were the happy ones this time around. It was very gratifying for everybody involved, um, you know, for a lot of reasons, not just in the moment and the team that was, you know, here on that day, but everyone, across the years that have, have followed the journey or helped the journey, it's, yeah. it was a gratifying moment. It's still, um, you know, decades from now, we'll look back at the celebration afterwards, it's fantastic. And unscripted, I think, wasn't it? I mean, you, you kind of knew what you wanted to do if, but. Yeah, I'm, well, surprisingly, it was actually for me scripted. Oh, not going up the fence, he's going through the fence. Joseph Newgarden into the crowd. At least the, the going into the, stands part right you know i always wanted to do that i've had such a respect for the speedway and the energy the atmosphere here that's one of the main things people talk about when you you've been to the indy 500 or you hear someone speak about it it's you know it's the crowd it's yeah. the people that make this place what it is and i've always re respected that energy that this place creates and, and i wanted to be a part of that if you know yeah. if one day i was lucky enough to win i said I i'm going to go into the crowd i, I don't want to climb the fence i want to be in the crowd and celebrate with everybody it was classic uh, really well done all right so you've got the 500 and then dare i say the rest of the season for you uh when you look back at 2023 what what do you make of the year i, I think 2023 in a lot of ways was you know, a good year. It was very much a great year when you look at the Indianapolis 500. Yeah. You know, from, from that standpoint, it couldn't be better. Uh, so we checked, you know, the number one box, which at the end of the day, that's that's really, that is the first goal, winning yeah. the Indy 500, and then how do we follow it up and win the championship? You know, we fell short in the second piece. Um, we weren't able to win the championship, but I think we, you know, the, the thing that I leave the year most encouraged about is the potential that we have. You know, I, I've spoken about that a lot, yeah. but it's different this year in that on the two car, there was a, Quite a lot of turnover you know we had a lot of new people that hadn't been in the positions they were in on on our car and i thought everybody really did an excellent job you know when i when i look at the performance of the individuals on the team there was you know not a lot to be left desired for the future i mean I, they, they showed exactly what they were capable of we just didn't fully realize our potential i think most mm -hmm. of the time which leaves me encouraged you know yeah. when i look at that i say okay we had a really good year we won four races but we're not reaching our potential that gives me tons of motivation to, to head into 2024 and say, you know, we can be much better. I'd say for you, I mean, this is what, tw uh, year 12, 13 for you now? It's the 12th year, yeah. I mean, if you, if this sort of thing would have happened to you in year four, maybe your maturity level wasn't there and you'd, and you'd be upset and maybe calling people, I, I don't know what. But now you, you come at this with a much different mindset uh, of being around this game for a long, long time and can realize, hey, this was a good season. We had the potential to make it better. And that, that, that speaks a lot to, I think, uh, where you've come in your journey, you know? You know, racing's tough. I mean, you, you have such high expectations all the time. I think it's natural. This is a performance industry. You're either <laughs> performing at the highest level or you're not around anymore. Yeah. You know, that's just simply how it works. So I think your standard always has to be incredibly high. You know, when I leave this, the, the year, when it comes to the championship, I'm, I mean, I'm dissatisfied with finishing, you know, where we did. I, we won four races, the potential was enormous, and we just didn't realize all of it. So I'm pretty dissatisfied with that. But at the same time, you know, I think you find comfort in the things that you can't control. Meaning that, you know, in racing, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables, yep. you know, and, and yeah. I think if you focus on controlling what's, you know, within your power, and you feel like, look, you did everything possible at your disposal, then, then you can be satisfied with the year. And I think in a lot of ways, you know, we maximized ourselves 
Um, we've just got to continue to find you know, ways to reinvent and be better. That's the game nowadays. It's always changing. You know, what worked one year is not going to work the next. Yep. And I think trying to keep up with the ever-changing landscape is, is the new challenge, really. And the last thing about all this, <clears throat> we talked about it before we started going here. By the way, look at this set. We, it's we, amazing. We, I mean, uh, it, it, I don't know how many people worked on it. It looks like a lot. I mean, over over 10 or 15 people. It had to be at least two people that did this. <laughs> and thankfully not us. <laughs> but The sound quality has to just be look next at this. level. Look, I mean, look at this. We're not messing around here. Anyway, uh, we all sound like Barry White with these microphones, but that's a new... Yeah, this is like the new, what is it, a ASMR? Is that what sure. it is? Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, uh, that's what's in this piece as well. Yeah, there you go. We're going for the Emmy. <laughs> But to your point, I think, we, again, we spoke about it before we got us. It's not a coincidence that the last driver to win the 500 and the championship happened 13 years ago with Dario Franchi. It's a tremendously difficult achievement in motorsports, let alone IndyCar. And so everything's got to come together. Uh, and so I, I think you shouldn't get hard down on yourself about what happened this year, I don't think. Yeah, I think the tough thing was I, I didn't want to fall victim to you know, the, the, the enjoyment of winning the 500 and the satisfaction of that. You know, yeah. I think it's really easy to fall into that trap where you won the 500, so everything else is kind of just a bonus. It's, it's good regardless. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, that's true. You feel that way. You know, yeah. you, you can kind of rest on the comfort of, well, we won the biggest race of the year. You know, it was a great year. It doesn't really matter what else happens. But, you know, I, I just, it's hard for me to sit in that mindset. Like I really, I don't want to fall into that trap yep. and I really wanted to do everything possible to try and win the championship, you know, this year as well. And, and you know, it didn't work out, but look, this is my first time going through it. Uh, now I have a little experience. Hopefully I can win the 500 again with the team uh -huh. and uh, we can have another shot at it. Cause it, it is difficult. You know, there's a lot that comes with winning the 500 and, and you're very busy and, you know, for good reason. Yep. Um, but you got to figure out a way to manage that, you know, in, in the best way possible to, try and keep going for the, for the finish of the year. Yeah. Let me throw out a couple of races and just give me some of your highlights uh, from each one. Texas started fourth, finished for, it was a crazy finish at yeah. the end as well. Uh, a lot of satisfaction for you there at Texas? Texas was satisfying. You know, we had a great car there. I think really on ovals in general, we, we were phenomenal. Yeah. You know, our team just did a great job building. They were fast cars. You know, when you have a fast race car that's got good speed, it kind of makes everything else easier. Yeah. So I think in a lot of ways, yeah, Texas was gratifying. We just kind of followed it up from the year prior and, and it was a crazy race. You know, the yeah. way the fuel uh, situation developed towards the end and clustering everybody, I mean, it was not an easy race, but, but gratifying. Uh, Road America started fourth, finished second on the podium. What do you remember about Road America? Road America was a good day. Um, I think there was there was more in it there. You know, the, the potential to win was on the table. It didn't fully work out, but you know, we finished second, which was a good recovery, particularly when you look at how we started the weekend. You know, we had tested there prior. We felt like we were coming in with a good game plan. And then the start of the weekend was really tough for us. We were slow, we were on the back foot. You know, I felt like we recovered really well in qualifying. And then we kind of made the most of the weekend in a lot of ways, putting the car on the podium. So. Yeah, I think Road America was a good point for us. You know, it was, it was good points in general. And then uh, the atmosphere at Iowa is incredible anyway. Uh, you got a doubleheader, High V comes in, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, concerts. You started third and seventh in both, both races, and you did, which is not easy to do, something that a lot of people predicted you were going to sweep. You came back and, and, and backed it up. Um, how special was that? Yeah, Iowa was, was tremendously gratifying because it's, you know, I, I think there's a lot of pressure for us on the two car to, to roll into Iowa and, and be really good. One, you know? two, three, teammates and you got it on the inside. He grabs second, he grabs the lead. What can't this guy do here? He is the king of corn country. Iowa Speedway sees Joseph Newgarden win again. It's not easy when you're the favorite, right? <laughs> I, it's not. It, people just assume that, right. well, you're really good here, so you, you'll have a great weekend. And I, I think that in a lot of ways makes it more difficult because it's, it's like the 500. You know, there, there's a certain pressure that gets put on you. And when you feel that pressure, it's kind of thriving within that, maximizing it. I thought we were capable of doing that the year before. Yeah. You know, I really felt like in 22, we, in a lot of ways, could have swept the weekend and, and that would have changed, you know, some other outcomes for us didn't work out. So then they followed up in 23, come back and just get it right and finally get the job done. I think everybody took a lot of pride in that. Yeah, it was a, a tremendous weekend for sure. Hey, who would you consider as your biggest rival in the series? Like, hey, you know, going into a weekend, if I beat so-and-so, it's gonna be a good weekend. 
You know, I, I wish I could pinpoint one individual. There's so many. <laughs> as a key rival, it's impossible to do. I think that, you know, IndyCar nowadays, it speaks to the competitiveness of the championship. You know, I, I can't just say one. Yeah. You know, you could, you could right now, you, I think it would be easy to just say Alex Blow. You know, say he's kind of the guy that you want to show up and, and beat. But it is more than Alex. You know, you saw Dixon that had a tremendous charge at the end of the season. Yeah. He never goes away. You yeah. know, he's always going to be in the conversation. I think Pottle Award has tons of potential. Yep. You know, it, it's it's not unforeseeable that things go differently. Pottle Award is you know your guy that you're you're racing against in the championship. You know, my teammates Will Power, Scott McLaughlin. You just never know you know how strong they're going to be across the year. So it is, and, and that's only a few. You know, yeah. you have more people than that too. Yeah. But it's just I, you can't pinpoint one individual. It's it's too difficult nowadays. All right. So with that said. You know, there, there are some, there's a younger group that's coming up, right? I'm just throw out some names, just give me some quick hitter thoughts on some of these kids, let's call them. Uh, Christian Lundgaard. Fast, very fast. Confident, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> you I, noticed that? I respect the confidence. <laughs> Christian has a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cal Kirkwood. Yeah, I think just, you know, level headed and mature, methodical when I think of Kyle. Yeah, put him in the right car, right situation. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. aces, definitely. David Malukas now moving over to Aero McLaren. David Malukas, I see tons of potential. I think that's what everybody sees. Um, you know, and interesting to, to follow. He's, he's always, he, he could be a threat, you know, almost anywhere you go. So a ton of potential there. The last thing, because he is still a kid, Colton Herta. <laughs> Colton, I love that Colton Herta is a kid. When did he start? Was he 18? I think he was 14 or something. Oh my gosh. Uh, Colton Herta. <laughs> he's wow. still only 23, right? That's what it, blows my mind. I right. feel like I've known him forever, but right. he's just a child still. Now he's, Colton is blindingly fast. Um, you know, just could be unstoppable yeah. is almost the word I would use for him in certain situations. Um, so he's fun to compete against. He's fun to beat. If you're gonna win the 2024 championship, uh, to your point earlier, who you gotta beat? Or name a couple of guys, or half the field, or whatever it is. 2024 is gonna be interesting. You know, there's gonna be a change up uh, in that, you know, there's there's certainly a new challenge when it comes to the powertrain. Yep. You know, when you look at the hybrid component and how we're gonna develop, how we're gonna utilize it, you know, that that's completely up in the air. You know, it, it whenever you have a, a game-changing event like that, you know, everything can get turned around. So if it was 22 to 23, I would have said, hey, you're not gonna have a ton of movement between sort of your main characters. Right. And that was true. You know, the main characters that were there in 22 were really there in 23. 24 it just could be completely new, you know, could completely wipe the landscape and, and uh, you know, create a new challenge. It's hard to say. I'm, I'm excited because I think the engineers on, on the teams, the mechanics on the teams, they're excited to tinker with something new. and maximize it and try and one-up the competition. And I think that's really what you're gonna to need to be looking out for is, you know, when you have these new elements, how do teams tackle it? And it's not just year over year, it's, it's gonna be a race to race thing. So it, it'll, yeah. it will progress throughout the year and we'll see who can uh, stay on top of it the best. You've done some of the hybrid testing, uh, so deploying the, the extra boost, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's, it's a rhythm, it's a, it, it is a game changer because it's not just there sitting there ready to go. You gotta actively think ahead, plan ahead on how to regen and then use it, right? Yeah, I mean, sitting here today, you know, the, the hybrid component is still in development. So, yeah. you know, the, the utilization of it is still, um, it's still being discussed yeah. on, on how we're gonna use it, but yeah. there's a lot of ways it can go. And I think, you know, regardless of how it's utilized, it's gonna add a new element for the teams, the drivers to separate themselves, you know, and to figure out how do, how do you, you know, how do you improve your efficiency, whether the yeah. way you're using it, the way you're deploying it, uh, it's it's fun. It's fun to have some some new challenge, and we'll see how everybody does with it. The last couple of things. Uh, you live in Nashville. You love Nashville. The championship's going to be in Nashville in 2024. What's, what's the city going to be like? You think? You know, Nashville is a great destination for everybody right now, and I think IndyCar. It's it's. I've said this. It's a perfect marriage. You know, IndyCar and Nashville. They they work well for each other. Nashville loves. Uh, they love a party atmosphere. They love the energy, and IndyCar brings that in spades. You know, they have great energy. They've got great competition. And I think they're going to interact really well together. To finish the year there is is pretty special. I think, you know, there's a lot of our fan base that's going to have access to that city and be able to you know, yeah. be there up and close. And uh, I, I think the weather will be a little better too. You know, being in <laughs> September versus early August. Yeah. I live in Nashville. I know how hot and humid it can be. So I think everybody's looking forward to the the schedule switch up. Right, last thing, off season, what's it going to be like? 
off season, I'm, I'm ready for some slowdown. Yeah. You know, I think we'll get there when November hits, you know, we'll start to ease up. But, um, you know, this year was tough in a lot of ways. They, they, they all are, you know, it's, it's a demanding job in a lot of ways. You know, it's, it's a, it's a great job. It's, you know, it's one that I take complete fulfillment in. Yeah. But you've got to really commit. I mean, you know, if you're someone that doesn't like to travel, you know, every third day out of the week, then it can wear on you. So yeah. Yeah, I think recharge time is going to be good for everybody. I'm certainly looking forward to it and, and ready to attack next year. Dad life's going well. Dad life's great. We're very lucky. We've been so fortunate. Um, you know, health is good in the yeah. family. You can't ask for more than that. So we've been super fortunate. Yeah, excited for the future. It's going to get, I'm sure, much busier. Are you looking forward to that point where um, you realize what dad does for a living? Or have I, you thought about that yet? I'm very excited for, yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. You know, every, every week something new is Develops, changing right. and developing. I mean, it, it is a wild process to go through. Um, very gratifying to be a father and, you know, to, to look at the potential of the future. I, I think it gives me a lot of, it gives me a lot of passion to continue in life and to mm. want to do the best I can and, you know, try and be a better person. You know, I think that's probably the biggest gift out of the whole thing. A lot of gifts this season. Uh, enjoy the off season. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate you.